this is Jean Marie Ward for Buzzy Magazine. With me today is Wendy Higgins, the debut author of Sweet Evil, the first volume in the Sweet Trilogy from Harper Teen. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about Sweet Evil? Sweet Evil, um, it just as the, uh, the title implies, it's got a, a main character who has some very sweet elements, and she's also got these dark elements in her. She's got a um, guardian angel for a mother and a demon for a father, so she's caught between those two extremes. A little bit like teenagers of all stripes. Exactly. She's just like a normal, a normal teen, except her. Um, urges are stronger than normal. Stronger than normal, and she has extra senses, almost superpowers. Exactly. Even. And you don't make it easy for her. You put her up against uh, Kaiden Rowe, who I believe has a rather interesting parentage of his own. Yes, his, he is the son of the Demon of Lust, mm -hmm. and he's a drummer, and he's from England, so he has an English accent, and he's just basically the embodiment of lust, and he um, his father tells him that he needs to help train her, um, and she does not like the sound of that, uh, but at the same time, she does feel, you know, obviously a pull toward him, so overall, it, it's a dark love story, and um, yeah, it's a, we don't exactly get full closure at the end of the first book, but we'll definitely get there. <laughs> at the end of the trilogy, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Dealing with angels, you had a lot of research to do. How'd you go about that? Well, I first uh, consulted the Bible because this is it's a biblically based um, angel lore and demon lore, so I read up on on everything that I could there wasn't, there's not much to, to be found in the Bible, you know, about what they look like and that sort of thing, so really a lot of it was just my crazy imagination. Um, I just asked myself, you know, if a, if a demon were to possess a body, what, what could it do to it? If an angel were to possess a body, what could it do to it? You know, it would be um, human attributes, but bigger, stronger, um, just everything that a human is, but more. You're a, a former English teacher, or did I get that right? That's right. And you taught in high school. Do you think that most high school students have a bit of the angel and a bit of the devil in them? Oh, yes. Yes, they definitely do. <laughs> um, some of my students that gave me the most heartburn when I was teaching, you know, I would see them years after they graduate, and I would see them in Walmart or something, and they would be like, oh, Miss Higgins, I love you, and I'm sorry that I was so bad, but you know, it was just because I loved you, and <laughs> you know, they, they're just, they're sweet, and I, I love, I miss working with teens, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to write a book for teens, so I could still be, you know, reaching out to the teen community. Mm -hmm. Was that the inspiration of the book? That was definitely part of the inspiration. I think I was just finally at a time of my life where I was ready to to do something bigger. Um, I missed teaching. I loved staying home with my children, but I felt like I needed something more. I needed to do something more. I needed to still be working with people. I still needed to be reaching out to teens. I needed to um, just be doing something bigger. And I'd always loved writing, but I'd never found the right story that could keep my interest. And this one, when it came to me, um, it just bombarded me. And I, I couldn't not write it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't think about anything else for those first seven weeks of, of the first draft. So it was just really sort of an answer prayer. But the first draft wasn't the one you submitted to Harper Teen. You had a rather unusual path to publication. Want to talk about that a bit? Well, my first draft I put up on a website called Ink Pop, and it's owned by HarperCollins. Well, it's since been sold, but at the time, what would happen is um, people could go on there, they could post their writings, they could critique for each other, give feedback to each other, and vote on their favorite uh, projects. And my got voted up to the top five. Um, in the first month, and it went to a HarperCollins editor, and um, that is where the whole ball started rolling. And by that point, I had I had an agent. My book was out on submission, but um, 
when she emailed me and said I would like to read the rest of your book because I didn't have the whole thing on the website. But when she emailed me, that's when I knew like I could possibly be published with Harper Collins. And I, you know, cried and freaked out, and it was amazing. But yes, I, I didn't have a traditional route to publication. <laughs> Did you find the critique that you received on Inkpop helpful? Oh yes, 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 yes. When I first went on the site, I went on the site because I, it needed work, especially the first chapter. It needed something. Mm -hmm. Basically, the people on the, the site, they were very honest and they just, I eventually just threw out that first chapter completely and, um, and reworked it. So they helped me. They helped me get it to the point where it was ready. So by the time it landed in that editor's hands, it was it was the best that it had ever been, and it still changed hugely from that to when I finally heard back from them. I changed it from a single book to a trilogy. They only wanted to pick up the first book, but I just held out hope that you know that they would want the second and third one eventually. Hopefully, and they have. And they have. Last month they they came forward and. Um, I made an offer, so it's now officially going to be a trilogy, and I'm thrilled. And you've even got the cover for a book, too. Yes, and I love it. <laughs> uh, it's called Sweet Peril? Yes. Did I have that right? Sweet Peril, and the third is Sweet Reckoning. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about what's going to happen in Sweet Peril. In Sweet Evil, um, I think it's no spoiler to say that Anna Witt, the lead character, learns about her nature and meets a really sexy bo a guy named uh, Kaiden Rowe. Can you, without too many spoilers, tell us anything about Sweet Peril? It's really dangerous for these characters to be together. They're not supposed to love anyone, much less each other. Um, they're supposed to just spend their whole lives focused on doing the work of their fathers. So, um, Devils and angels. Devils and angels, yes. Um, so basically, this the first half of, of the second book is all about um, Anna traveling the world with another Nephilim boy, um, the, the son of the demon of wrath named Capano, and um, the two of them are trying to find other Nephilim like themselves who will be allies to help them fight against the, the demons, hopefully, eventually. Um, but then it always comes back around to Kaiden. So um, the second half of the story, finally Anna and Kaiden have to, you know, have to work out these things that they've been putting off for so long. So it gets interesting. <laughs> will they be doing it in, in Atlanta? The, uh, there's traveling all over the world in this story, but um, L.A. is where... Okay. The Was there any reason why you picked Atlanta as the setting of the first book, Sweet Evil? I lived in Georgia for a while as a child, and I've always loved Georgia. Um, my father and my stepmother and my little sister, Lucy, live in Atlanta, the Atlanta area right now. They live in Cartersville, which is the town where the book is set, so I chose it mostly as um, a shout out to my little sister. <laughs> and I even said it at her high school, Cass High School. Mm -hmm. So I did that for her. Oh, sh I bet she loves it. She loves it. <laughs> she thinks she's famous yes. <laughs> by, by extension at any rate. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, if anyone wants to visit my website, I have bonus scenes on there, scenes that are written from Kaiden's point of view, so those are always lots of fun. Um, I guess that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for Buzzy Magazine.